All right, if we are live right now, I'm just trying to double check on my phone because this is the first time for me going live on YouTube. <laughs> it says on here that I am live, but let me see if I can see it in my channel. There I am, ah, live on YouTube, first time ever through StreamYard. Gone live on Facebook a million times, but uh, this is a first, so it's always fun. Um, all right, I'm gonna see if I can click on it. Ooh, Not there we go. I'm gonna turn down the sound. And I'm gonna do what I always do on Facebook, which is leave this where I can check the comments. Oh no, but I wanna be able to see my image. Okay, so the plan today, I'm gonna to be drawing live in the studio. You guys are gonna to get to make see me making creation live. It's a pen and ink drawing of two dogs, uh, two corgis. And I already have the, the pencil drawing here. I don't know if you can see it, but um, I am gonna go in over it with the pen and ink. So today I'm going to be using the Fiber Castell uh, Four Pit Artist Pens Black Noir Negro India Ink. So this basically, the idea I like here is that you have some different um, textures, different uh, widths, and you know, like it's just not one plain, I, I don't even know how to say it, just one pen ink. So we also have a couple of different ones here, different widths, you can see it shows the different uh, sizes. This is just Artist Loft Illustration Pens. I just want to have as many options as possible because this whole thing is just going to be pen and ink. Um, and I am used to having either more paint and palettes and brushes or, or like charcoals. So working with pen and ink, you kind of have to use different widths of the pens and different um, strokes and different ways to create the same uh, either light and dark or maybe cross hatching, all sorts of different fun things. Um, so, okay. If you come on and you're alive with me, ask me your questions. If you're watching this later, then, then just pop the questions down in the comments and I'll get back to you. Um, all right, so the image that we're working with is, let me see if I can show you it. Hold on. Okay, so it's these two sweet little corgis. Let me see if we can focus, focus. I'm gonna pull that back, bring it forward. Okay, all right. And you can see that one of them has two different colored eyes, which is gonna be a fun challenge. Um, so that is going to be the starting image, but I've already done the sketch on, um, so what I did is I took the photo that she sent me, and I took some other photos that I found from online that I kind of like, I worked with and morphed and sketched. And then, this is not focusing, come on. I use an app called Prisma on my phone to make it, automatically go to looking like a pen and ink style drawing so that you could see what it's gonna look like uh, without me having to spend a whole lot of time drawing and redrawing it and trying different sketches and different like backdrops and compositions. This way I created like probably 20 different versions of the dogs in different positions with different backgrounds, closer, further away, to the left, to the right. Um, and that way I was able to use a mixture of that app Prisma um, as well as Canva to make a whole bunch of sketches and, and go over the ideas without wasting a lot of time. So that is what we're working with. Um, <clears throat> without further ado, the thing that I want to make sure that I do first is get their eyes right. Um, because, you know, you love your dogs, right? You love looking into their eyes. And just like any portrait of like a human, you want to make sure it looks like them. And I figure if I get all of this done, and then I mess up on this part because it's pen and ink, it's not forgiving. So I wanna make sure um, that I get their faces first, get that right. If gosh forbid I mess up, then I will, um, I'll start over, but I would rather get that right first. So I think what I'd like to do, I have a giant pad of paper here. I'm gonna test out the pen before I test it on here because that would be, uh, sad if I use a pen that I don't like the, the shape or size or color. Um, I did check that these are all the same black. That was one thing. There's lots of different shades of ink. Some have more blue, some have more red, some have more brown. Um, last time I did a very similar drawing to this uh, because it was a corgi. Um, we used a sepia ink. So I'm just going to on here Check and see. Okay, so we have a nice fine line. I think I'll make that bigger so you guys can see it. And I'm just picking out my pen. 
Okay, that one's even more fun. Mm. Okay. I just for some reason don't really like that one. I think because we are working with the eyes, I should start with the finest because that's the most like delicate detail. So I'm just, yep, yeah, I'm gonna check and make sure. And then uh, let me see if you guys can see that. I just tested out some different pens and different like the thicknesses and how the pen ink is coming across. These ones are much more like markerish and gonna leave a thicker line. It's gonna be, I'll use it for later in the, in the drawing. All right, get this out of the way. And I, okay, I don't know if this is gonna work, but I know they can't play regular music while you're doing art because YouTube or Facebook will kick you off because you're using licensed stuff. So I'm gonna try using YouTube's free music um, and just hitting play and putting on the classical genre. And let's see if it works. If YouTube doesn't like it, then I guess I'll find out. Um, all right, so. I have YouTube studio open. If you guys are artists and you want to draw in the studio and this works, then you'll know a way to be able to play music that's allowed because it's in the YouTube studio. It's the, you know, the music that's allowed to be used on there. Uh, that's free. Also, you could use epidemic sound, which is why I plan on making a playlist next time for y'all. So let's just get it started. All right. Is that a good volume? I don't know. If you're watching, you can comment and let me know if it's a good volume. All right. So I like to just use my phone. I could print out this photo and look at it, but this way I can zoom in and look at the picture of the puppy. So I'm going to start with this eye. Okay. And I'm used to doing charcoal drawing where I do a lot of shading that's like smooth lines. So I just have to remember this is not a charcoal drawing. And to leave the whites white because there is no undoing pen. Now I'm going to go back over later and erase the pencil. FYI. Okay. I gotta think through whether or not I want to do like solid coloring or cross hatching. Much easier to do cross hatching and then change it to solid. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I'm just gonna get the outlines first though. One of the things that this um, customer wanted or client, however you wanna say, this art patron, um, was a look. I'm trying to style a little bit. She wanted it to look kind of like the old fairy tale books. Um, like think, I don't know, Hansel and Gretel or um, just some sort of old fairy tale. And the way that they would have done printmaking back in the day, the kind of images you would have seen in books would have been literally a print where they etch into like metal and things like that. Um, so what we're creating here is not a print, but it's going to be print like, which will have the essence of an old fairy tale book because ultimately this is going to look like they're in a fairy tale land that's what we're going for kind of a little touch of magic now there's different shades in the eye you'll see i'm kind of creating some different i don't know if i can zoom in anymore for y'all i can't i apologize i hope that this is big enough i can bring the camera actually closer let me see if I can bring it closer. Okay. If you can see this, you probably still can't, but there's just, there's different shades in the eye that I'm trying to capture. And this is in the darkest eye. Um, so you'll see the whites of the eye and you want to make sure that even in a very, very dark eye, there's lots of different shades and that you're capturing all the different areas. All the different values. That's what makes a drawing come across realistic or not, is the more detail, the more you pay attention to the little things. So that's what life's all about, right? The little things. 
Okay, I want to capture the aspect of the fur on the nose. So I'm gonna make sure that the way that I'm using my pen and the line strokes are going in the right direction as to where the fur would go. Does that make sense? So you wanna make sure it's going this way, not that way kind of a thing. And actually dogs with their fur really lend well to this, this style of art, doing linear drawings because the fur is kind of like little lines. All right. I think once we get a little bit more detail, this is gonna to come together on the eye part. Now that image that I use, the Prisma app, it um, simplified everything, you know, way more than what I would have done, but it's, you know, it's just a quick little app filter. Um, so now I have to go back and make sure that I like the decisions it made, because sometimes maybe it made something just way too dark or light or Kind of like someone going in with like a club instead of a, a fine paintbrush. All right, leave that like that. This is the darkest spot over here. Let's see, it's kind of like this. Again, with the eyeballs, I'm trying to go the direction of the eye. I'm gonna skip this one because I like chill music. This is not chilly, this is very dramatic. All right, let's just do some music for a bit here. spots go up here. I'm going with kind of the darkest areas first. As you're watching, let us know where you're watching from. What kind of art do you do? Or do you make art? Have you ever done a drawing of a dog? All right, you wanna make sure we get the nose right. And again, I'm gonna go in the direction of whatever it is. So the line needs to follow the, the direction of the body part or whatever it is. very intentional. Now I'm going to go a different direction for this medium tone. So that's another thing you can do to give it different shades and different, um, it, since this is all gonna be black and white, um, you have to have lighter and darker areas. So sometimes lines can be going one direction and then you change them to go a different direction. Now create some interesting, almost like contrast and um, creating you know darker to mid tones. Um, so right here on the nose, I decided to kind of go this direction, especially because as it's, as it's rounding up, it's going in a different, direction. I always try to imagine I'm actually like touching the nose, touching the thing. Imagine the actual shape.
And because we're dealing with fur, we want to think of the length of the fur. We don't want to have a line that's super long if that's not how long the fur would be. We also don't want it to be too short and look like a child in the drawing. No offense to children. We all gotta start somewhere, right? tongue in here. And this made it so much easier having the pencil already done. So I don't have to worry too much where I put the pen. Okay, the nose needs to go out a little bit more. Now for this area of all dark, I could choose to use another pen that's a little wider. Let's just see how that works. Again, I'm going to test it on my other paper before I make a decision. We can't go back. Okay. This one says SB. Can you see this? You can't see it. What's that up here? All right, so if I go this way, it looks like that. If I go that way, it makes a thick line. This is more exacting, okay. That was 1.5. This one is B. Okay. Maybe I can write, this is B, this is 1.5. This was S, I think, no, SB. This one says SC. Hmm. I feel like it's either that one or SB that I like for the fur. Well, yeah, that can create a kind of a, a wispy thing. Yeah, I like that. I sure hope this is a good decision because it's no going back. <laughs> okay. I'm using it on the darkest spot of his head. And I'm going to go in the direction. I know their fur is sometimes a little longer on their head right there. Let's see. I don't want to block you guys. Okay, yeah, this is going to create some interesting different um, textures. I really, I don't want to block you guys, but it would be best to come from this direction. So maybe I'll wait till later to do that part. And I think, yeah, let's do it over here too. I like that. I 
And I'm going very light on this. I'm not holding this to the paper barely at all. Because <laughs> if I do, it'll leave a big fat mark and it's not what I want. Okay, I think. Make sure I have the right line here, yeah. And sometimes it's just careful layering over and over. See, I just have this whole drawing on a frame from another piece of art, actually. Okay, I want to get this part in here. So I just use another frame because it's nice and smooth. Take this video and turn it into a time lapse and make it where you guys get to see it come to life real quick. Which is always fun. Again, I'm being very gentle, very, very gentle. And it's gonna be a little bit darker and thicker towards the base and then get lighter as it's layering over the white fur. We yeah, have just a little bit come up here. And this is where I can use the other pen and find the cap. There we go. So I can use this pen to come in and do some of the fine medium tones, the mid tones, the tan fur.
Okay, so I think that I'm good with those eyes. I'll come back and probably perfect them a little bit more. But um, I'm going to move on to the other dog just to get it started. And then I'll come back and do all this other stuff because I'm confident I can handle this other part. <laughs> but let's get these eyes in here. Can you see them? They're a little far away, but I can zoom in and post. That is the beauty of editing, isn't it? It's a nice song. Gotta get the whites of those eyes right because we all know those puppy dog eyes with those whites. They really get us. That's where the light's reflecting. Right on the pupil there. Hey, I use this song in one of my videos. I recognize this. Which is a silly video I made about how to film yourself doing exactly this. <laughs> If you haven't checked it out yet, you should. It was how to film yourself drawing and painting. Because if you have ever tried to do it, it's uh, not always the easiest. If you saw my full contraption right now, like I got, I got the camera and the light and the this and the that. But I used to just use a windowsill and the light from the window. And I used to not have this nice, nice, uh, easel. I'm very grateful for this. Much more sturdy than the one I started out with. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do, right? Hmm. Okay, this part's a little darker. Get some fur going over the eye. When you guys draw and create, do you hold the phone and look at the picture like me, or do you print out your image? Or do you work from your imagination? Again, paying attention to the direction of the fur as it goes along the side of the face.
All right, so far I'm happy with it. I can see this is gonna work out. Another thing I'm doing is making sure to pick my pen up off of it instead of just dragging back and forth. That's going to make a difference. It's something that you'll see, you know, a lot of children will do. They don't pick it up each time and it creates a different stroke. Unless you want that look. So a lot of times when you're trying to perfect something, it's these little tiny extra muscle movements and, and just little details. That's what changed it. That's what makes you grow as an artist. It's a little bit harder, but it makes the image just a little bit better. Actually, a lot better. All right, so we've got the dark shadows of where the nostrils are. I'm gonna. I'm pressing a little harder now. I'm getting cl the lines closer together. I might cross hatch, going back the other way. Cross hatching is literally just. It's like making a cross. It's like tic tac toe. Just cross those lines. Now in printmaking, that's something I used to do in college where you actually, you etch it into metal or sometimes it's um, I think linoleum. There's lots of different things you can etch it into, plastic even. But if you use a metal plate, then you etch it into, there's like some sort of protective barrier you paint on it. It's like black film. You etch that and then you put it in an acid bath. And then after the acid bath, it has made grooves into the metal for where the lines are. And then you put ink onto that, just like creating a, a stamp, but it's kind of like a reverse stamp. And then you would lay the plate down onto the paper. And if you use a printing press, like you use like a big roller and it squishes the ink onto the paper. Um, you could also do it just kind of like a stamp, but it just has a different effect. You know, how, how uh, stamped into the paper it is. So basically what we're doing here, because we're trying to make it look like that, each line that I'm making is like, is like the line I would be cutting into the metal, it would be carving into the metal. The reason that matters is just thinking through, you know, if we're trying to give that effect, being aware of like, what are we doing? How does it look? Does it look like that? because we're not using that same tool, but we're still trying to kind of create that feeling. When we first talked about making this piece, she said she wanted something steampunk. So I was picturing, and there's a lot of images out there of dogs with goggles on. I was picturing something like that, you know, watches and gears and and steampunk -y kind of things. But what she meant was that kind of that era, like an old classical feel. So that's part of the whole commission process is figuring out what do they mean when they say, this is the feeling I want. This is the thing that I want. Do they really mean, and she said very clearly, she didn't want any watches or gears or goggles or hats or anything on the dogs. So, and then when she said fairies, I'm picturing little tiny fairies flying around but that wasn't actually necessary. It was very tails, very close, but <laughs> very big difference. So having the conversation with your art client, getting clarity, very important. My conversations will sometimes be like an hour long. Sometimes it takes several conversations and several sketches back and forth. Like this one, we kind of started back in December, but we started more seriously, I think in January. And some of the things I told her were important 
I'll turn the music down in case that's too loud. Some of the things I said that were important is that the lighting needed to be the same on both dogs. If they're both in the same location and you have two different photos of two different lighting scenarios, like if the light's coming from here on one dog and it's actually coming from here and on another dog because, or it's, or it's evening in one and it's morning in another, it's going to um, affect how it overall looks. Like there'll be something that's just kind of off. So it's very important if you're working from a photo to have the best photo to work from possible. You know, with the right angle, the right lighting, that it's clear, not super pixelated and super small. So sometimes people ask me to kind of Frankenstein some different images together and it just, it's not easy to do and it's not gonna make the best outcome, to be honest. So having good source material and researching, you know, I looked up a lot of fairy tale images, a lot of printmaking images, Alice in Wonderland, um, things like that to get ideas for this. So there's a lot of research as well. And then you talk about things that inspire you. Like um, we talked about that movie. Um, what is it? Angelina Jolie plays in it. Um, oh my gosh. I can't think of the word, the name. It's like a Snow White style one, but she's like kind of evil, but she's kind of not. Is it wicked? No, it's not wicked. Anyways, she wanted that feeling. Kind of drive me nuts until I remember the name of it. <laughs> I think it's like one word and it's like her name. If you're watching and you can think of it, post it in the comments. I don't know if you've seen the ad for the new Corilla, like Corilla DeVille. Like, oh my gosh, it looks so good. It has, um, is it Emma? Emma Stone. Oh, it looks so good. It kind of looks like if you put the Joker with the old, you know, Corilla DeVille, like the one that we saw as kids, 101 Dalmatians. Like, so it's a little bit realistic and dark, but it's also got some of the classicness. I think it's meant for people our age my age, whatever age you are, I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna put a little bit darker right here. Yep, it's coming together. Do a little bit of dark right here. I wanna be careful I don't go too overboard. I think that worked out. So see, I'm using the different pens to create different shades. And that's, yeah, that's working. And angling this pen slightly different to create different Shapes, thicknesses, directions. Okay, let's come back over here. Nice thing about pen and ink is that I don't have to worry about smearing it because with charcoal, my hand would be, oh, it's still dirty. It's from the pencil though. 
<laughs> it's okay. It'll erase. But if it was charcoal, it would be all over the place if I was doing this. I'm bad. I rest my hand on the paper. Very bad. This is nice chill music. So dramatic. Gotta get those eyes right. It's all in the eyes, right? You can get everything else right, but you don't get the eyes right. It kills the whole portrait. Even if it's a dog. And the eyebrows, these little cute eyebrows, the dogs. Gotta get those right. Oh, I used this song in my video too.
can see his little cheek goes like that. One of them might be a girl and it might be calling my his and I'm sorry. I know that they have names and I can't remember and they were really super super cool names. I think they were from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Sorry pups. Maybe I'll learn them tonight and then tomorrow when I draw again I can let the world know. And let them know your name so they never forget the name of the Gorgies. It's coming together. It's more fur going on over here. Drawing can be very meditative. There's so much in life where you're on your computer and you're on your phone and you're distracted by a million different things. But when you're creating something like this, like you just have to pay attention and be in the moment and you're just creating. Even when you're live on YouTube, talking to an audience that currently isn't there. <laughs> it's okay. One day. One day you will be watching this. And that's why I'm talking to you now. So speaking of how far have we gone in this, we're at almost an hour. So I think that's probably a good stopping point. Oh, we got some text messages. Uh-oh, one of my neighbors needs foil. I better get her foil. Oh, that was 20 minutes ago. No, that was, yeah, it's like 30 minutes ago. Okay, so <laughs> the meditation is over. Um, here is the drawing so far. I'll back up a little bit. Okay. My other microphone just fell off the camera. It's all good. All good. Okay. So tomorrow I will go live again. I might go live on Facebook because um, 
it's just kind of fun. And uh, if you guys have any questions, come join me, laurenjaneart.com on Facebook, uh, laurenjaneart.com on the web, uh, Lauren Jane Inspires on YouTube, which is where you are right now. And uh, here, I'll turn on this music. If you have any questions about making art, selling art, marketing art, I am your girl. And uh, or if you just want some art made for you, let me know. I don't usually do corgis. This was a special request for a special person. Um, but I usually do figure drawing. Um, I really want to get more into some abstract work and some pop art. I think it would be so much fun to make some cool pop art. Um, but anyways, you message me. We'll talk. We can figure out. I love bringing people's visions into reality. But um, thank you so much for watching, guys. And uh, I promise it will get more interesting as we get bigger and bolder and wiser. Well, not wiser. Maybe. Maybe I'll learn a few things. Maybe you'll learn a few things. All right. <laughs> um, this has been fun. First time on YouTube Live. And uh, if you enjoyed it, let me know. I promise um, I'm going to come back and edit this video so it's a little bit more precise. Maybe just do a time lapse, make it easy. Um, but hey, if you like seeing it live and me commenting as I go, let me know because I won't know otherwise. All right. Hope you guys are having a good one and I will see you soon. Bye.